I want to focus on guidelines for selection of energy vintage energy efficient ventilation fans. And I'm particularly thinking about the ventilation fans and not mixing fans because there's different criteria. And like Brad showed, um, a lot of the electricity used on swine, uh, poultry and dairy facilities comes from basically used by fans. You know, the big exception is the amount of fan energy required for small swine, like in a swine nursery, which his presentation pointed out. So in most cases, the efficiency of the fans we use on the farm can have a big impact on the energy we need to produce milk, meat, and eggs. So the key question is, what do we look for in an energy efficient fan? Well, there's four basic things. And the first one is we want to make sure we've got equipment that's designed for use in harsh agricultural conditions. You know, we've got high ammonia and high moisture that can be tough on electrical equipment. The good news is that most of our main ag fan manufacturers, they're already taking care of us on that. They're using typically using the right stuff. There are a few that aren't, but all the major ones are. The next three things are the airflow rate. We need to make sure that the fan we're choosing is providing the airflow rate that we need for, out of that fan. And uh, the, the, the recommendation is select a fan that will give us the airflow you need, gives us the airflow we need at a tenth of an inch of water. Now, we may use that fan at a higher, slightly higher or lower static pressure drop, but that's, that's the criterion we use for uh, selection of the fan. The next biggest thing um, is efficiency. And so we want a high ventilation efficiency ratio. I know that's a mouthful, so a lot of times I'll abbreviate it as VEER. And that's basically the CFMs that I get for every watt of input power. So that'll affect the efficiency of the fan or as a major piece of it. And the last one has to do with the, the overall design of the fans, the way I think of it. We want a fans designed to maintain sufficient airflow as we work it at higher pressure drops. And we call that the airflow ratio or AFR. Now, a lot of information about all four of these can, are, can be found in the ASAB engineering practice on selection of energy efficient fans. I'm actually, I'm pulling some from that. And then also there's some uh, little side pages at the Best Labs website where they also go through these definitions and actually is a handy little fact sheet type format where you can see these uh, for a review. So, what do we look for in an energy efficient fan? Uh, what's a basic characteristic? It's true that it will typically have a discharge cone, and that's what you're seeing in these pictures, some nice shiny galvanized ones, some old plastic ones. Um, and in fact, several years ago, we took best lab data uh, where we could have a paired comparison where they, they tested a fan with the exact shutter and housing, both with and without the cone. And when we did that paired analysis, on the average, the cone improved the efficiency or the veer number by 15% at a tenth of an inch static pressure. But we also saw in that study that not all the fans that have cones meet these minimum criteria that we're going to talk about, or even what I call good high efficiency criteria. Uh, from that, we've got to have the actual data on the fan we want to use, because the good data will show us all of these things we're talking about. And so where can you get this data? Well, we've mentioned the best lab. They've got a website where uh, they report the information. In fact, the manufacturers pay to have their equipment tested using standard methods. And here's their website. But to be frank with you, I never put it in. I just go to Google or whatever search engine I'm using. I type in best lab. And that's typically the first hit in the column. And I can go to the website there. The other source is Many of these manufacturers, in fact, almost all the major manufacturers I think of that are paying to have their equipment tested also publish that data in their literature. And in fact, they'll have their associated best lab test number. And you can believe those numbers. That, so they'll provide it for you. But here's the bottom line. If you don't have the data, don't buy the fan. You've got to know the performance characteristics and efficiency characteristics of that equipment. So let's look at a quick comparison just to see some of these things. I'm going to use two 48-inch fans. One does not meet the minimum ASAB standard for VEER, and one actually exceeds it. So here they are. And, and just to put a note, uh, right now the ASAB guideline says 17.6 CFM per watt at a tenth of an inch static pressure is what's needed 
to consider a 48 inch fan to be energy efficient. So the low efficiency fan in this chart, the bottom line with the squares, at a tenth of an inch static pressure, you can see it's 15.5 CFM per watt, well below what ASAB says is the minimum you should look for. The one I'm comparing it to is high efficiency is actually 20.5 CFM per watt. So there's, we're going to look, talk about that more in a minute, but there's a wide variation. Now, and in this case, we can also see that we get more airflow at a tenth of an inch of static pressure uh, for the high efficiency fans compared to low efficiency, you know, 20,800 versus 17,200. Now, when we see a CFM per watt that's greater, in this case, 20.5 versus 15.5, the greater that number, it tells me I'm getting more CFMs for every watt of power I'm purchasing or to put into that fan. And oh, by the way, I'm looking at 0 0.1. I see 15 and a half, 20 and a half. Well, as I work the fan less, let's say if I move down to 0 0.05, I see that the CFM per watt goes up. Well, guess what? In the summertime, I can a lot of times operate at lower static pressure drops and I can get a benefit and efficiency there. And, but also we need to realize that for all fans, and I'm showing it for both of these, as we push this thing harder, if we increase the pressure drop in the system, we get less airflow. So if I go from 0.05 to 0.1 for the high efficiency fan, I'm going from 22,000 down to that 20,800. And if I pushed it even harder, I'm going to lose airflow. They all do that. And the CFM per watt does the same thing. We already showed this, but I want to point out, as I push a fan harder, not only to get less airflow, I decrease my CFM per watt in all cases. So that's why we have these selection criteria that they take this into account. That's why we select at point one, even though I may use it differently. Now, in 2017, we did a study where we went, got all the best lab data we could together, did an analysis, did a bunch of things that's kind of boring. If you want to go see that, go look at our pub. But that middle column there is we determined what's the mean VIR 10. That's the ventilation, ventilating efficiency ratio at 0.1 inches of water. And so that's the mean for all these fan classes that we established from the data. So you can notice from small fans, 8 to 10 inch, all the way up to the biggest ones, 53 to 61. That was the largest that was available at that time. We see on the average, beer goes up with fan size. Now, the, the far column it says target beer, 0.1. That's the number that we, uh, based on a little statistical, statistical stuff, we pretty much said that's the target that we think we should go for to really make sure the fan's energy efficient relative to population of equipment. So let's zero in that 48 inch line. That's what we're going, we've been using so far and we're going to continue to use. Notice, the, if you remember, the, the, the ASAB number is 17.6. Well, the mean of all the product that we had at that time was 18.9, which tells you, guess what? The average fan is better than the standard. And then we pretty much said, okay, if I'm really going to have a winner in this category, uh, we need something that's at least one to two standard deviations above the population mean. And that's what the 19.3 is. So if I'm looking for 48 inch fans, I really don't want to go below 19.3 based on our study. The other thing is this airflow ratio, and it's actually critical because we want a good, strong fan. Uh, that's what we mean by having a, 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 we measure the steepness of the fan curve. Basically, the higher the AFR number, and which is also reported in these data sets, the stronger the fan. And you may ask yourself, what is AFR? Well, it's basically a ratio of the flow that was measured at 0.2 inches, which, by the way, is more static pressure drop than we should be using for any axial fan uh, like we use for ventilating ag buildings, divided by the flow at 0.05. Five. Uh, obviously, one would be perfect, and that's not possible. So the closer to one, the better. In that same study in 2017, we did the same type of analysis, but looking at AFR of all these ratings. And notice the grand means uh, for everything in the, from the 48 to 55 class all the way down to the small ones was, was uh, in excess of what we consider to be the minimum acceptable. In other words, the average fan in those up to 55 inch of the population 
exceeded our, our, our requirements, if you were all recommendations. It's only went to the 57 to 61 inch class where the average was below. So over here, you can see what I'm recommending, and actually the ASAB standards recommending and others, but basically 0.7 to 0.8, and it goes up as the diameters go down, okay? So let's look at a quick example, uh, kind of just to get a, a an easy snapshot of what difference can make. And obviously I picked an old situation, an old 40 by 500 broiler barn here in South Carolina. This is an actual grower we work with. They had 10 48 inch fans that without cones that look like what you see there, basically slant box fans, very inefficient and wor worn out. I mean, this producer needed new fans either way. And we checked and th they're operating a 10th of an inch static pressure, which is pretty good. They were getting the flows they needed. Um, and so they needed to make a replacement here. And our goal and what I did was let's get the, the highest veer fans we can to match the airflow rates they already had. And so we did several things, but here's, here's the result. Out right at the top, we determined that if we got the most efficient fan we could find that matched the airflow rates, we could save 29% roughly on the energy cost for tunnel ventilation. And that's just in the summertime. That's when we used like 60% of our ventilation energy, which is 60 to 70% a year. Okay. So, the choice here was, well, I could replace it with old fans like I have, a 16.3 Veer fan. That's what they had in the wall. Or I could buy the most efficient fans that would provide a, essentially the same airflow with a Veer 23.2. And that's what gave us this nice percent savings. But, you know, what? one of the situations that this grower had to work with was the fan dealer had fans for the exact same brand but there were ones that just met that. And so uh, we looked at that as well. Before we move on to that, we got to ask ourselves, do these things pay? Well, in this scenario, we're looking at someone who has a barn, actually more than one, where they need to replace the fans. So the choice is, do I put back the cheaper fan like the one I have, or do I put, spend a little more money and buy, buy this highest efficiency fan I can find that will do that will give me the flows I want? And and we went through the bids. Basically, the if I replace with what I have, it was six thousand seven hundred fifty a house. If I replace with the better ones, about nine thousand. We projected an energy savings, and so our simple payback here comes down to basically what's the difference in the price of the energy efficient versus low high efficiency versus low efficiency alternative divided by the estimated savings per year. That's really savings per tunnel ventilation period, which is once a year. And that's about 2.2 years. Now, if the fans are brand new, you're not going to show a payback this way. In fact, you've got to look at salvage value and some other things and do a more uh, intensive analysis. But here's what I was getting to is that this person saw these numbers and they wanted to go out and make, you know, make the purchase. But uh, what I have in this table is sub one and sub two. They're good fans. They both meet or one slightly exceeds the ASAB number of 17.6 and they had them in stock. But if we sub those fans, notice that the airflow rate, the total CFM at a tenth of an inch, was much higher than what they already had and they didn't need additional airflow. They were doing fine, thank you. So if I put in what the dealer had right off the bat, you know, I could go down and get it and get them installed ASAP, I wouldn't save 29%. Instead, I would increase my tunnel ventilation bill by somewhere 12 to 13%. And I point this out because we'll focus in on veer. That's good, I want a good veer. But then I've also got to look at well, how am I matching airflow? If I make a big, both airflow and veer ultimately get into, ultimately determine how much electricity I'm going to use and what the cost would be. And if I'm not careful, I could unnecessarily increase energy use in the name of improving efficiency. Now, one little caveat is if this facility needed to increase airflow to meet certain guidelines, then we want to do that in the most efficient way, efficient way. And then, yeah, we may not be able to save money or 
many times my goal is to see if we can break even and still meet our new ventilation goals. But uh, but both factors involved. So when we get right down to it. If I'm thinking in general, what are my guidelines for selecting a fans? Well, they've got to be built well for ag environments. But I want to look at, does it give me the flow at a tenth of an inch? Even though I hopefully will be using it at a variety of different static pressures. Does it meet the minimum airflow ratio requirements? I want a strong fan, especially for my winter fans. So it's 0.7 to 0.8, depending on the diameter. Then I want the highest CFM per watt I can get because it will simply keep saving me money for the life of the fan.